Uh, Alright, uh, shall we get started then? Alright then. Alright, welcome once again guys, welcome. You may see, let me get this microphone a little bit closer. Give me a sec, this may be a little bit annoying for you guys. There we go. Alright, so you may notice a little default cube in the scene. All right. The reason why is sometimes when we're going to be creating an environment, or when I create an environment, I will create loose and separate objects in separate files. Simply because it is easier for the eyes, it is less chaotic, and it's way easier to control um, your assets that way. Right? Um, for example, if you want to save your, the, a model you make for your environment for other use cases as well, then what I do is usually just create it in a separate file so I can append it anywhere and I know exactly where it is. Um, and it's going to be easier for our computers as well, right? So what I'm thinking, we were in the theme of Greek the previous time, right? We're going to make a little Greek village of some kind. Liquid asked for some, um, for some, what was it like the, um, what is it called? They're like the, um, the tree houses. Right, so we may add a little tree house somewhere as well, just for liquid for the first birthday, you know. Uh, but today we're going to make some Greek assets, and I want to start with the one thing that the Greek do best, and that is pillaring pillars. All right, so we're going to create pillars because we're going to be scattering these around all over the damn place. We're going to create buildings with it with large roofs. Um, so we may as well start off by the basics, right, by the foundation of what is needed, right? So we're gonna build some pillars. Now, the one thing that they did for pillars was they cut it up in segments, right? And uh, you can see it from reference images. I will talk about reference images a lot. And that is simply because it is very useful, right? So we're gonna get some styled um, assets here. So if I zoom in here a little bit, you'll see that we got little stacks of rounded rocks pretty much right and they are huge and they are scattered and well what we need to do is just create one pillar and we can pretty much just scatter it around right make arrays and create buildings with it we can scatter them all over the place right some of them may be broken already so they may have fallen down so we may even run a little um, a little simulation for that at some point as well and fracture it up so that is going to be a lot of fun there's an, actually an add-on for that i believe so we can take a look at that as well should be free so don't worry uh, but for now we're just going to make a little pillar and i want to focus on keeping this quite low poly right we are just talking about low poly already and we have also we're gonna try to keep this low poly but still look nice right that's a real trick we gotta keep in mind that this Said it's going to be in the distance later, so we can keep this quite, um, well, quite low poly without actually needing that much, that much geometry. Okay, so let me first show you a high poly way of, for example, creating this, and then I'll show. Um, I may show a few different ways of creating, for example, a pillar because there are multiple ways, and you can pick the one you like the most. Right, the first one is very easy. Right, so if you want to create the actual displacements of the geometry, for example, you're gonna need some high poly counts right you're gonna need a high geometry otherwise you won't be able to displace the mesh so if you actually want those displacements to be visible from close up if you're gonna make a game your characters walking around these pillars you want to have some depth in there you're gonna just need more geometry right and well in games you will have different levels of quality different levels of details for your assets the closer you are bull will be able to tell you all about those um, but for now, we're just going to make a quick pillar. And I'll show you the difference we can achieve with texturing and low poly. Right? I think that's the real key here. So, for example, we have a circle. And it is in our cube. I should have started off by deleting that cube. Delete that cube. And let's select this and move this out of the way a little bit. Because we don't want this to be in our center. Because that is annoying. Right? So, shift A, mesh, add a little circle. Right? You remember, whenever I work with columns or cylinders i always start off from a little circle all right and by default it will be set on 32 vertices and we can decrease this we can up it i'm going to set this for the high poly let's set this to 42 that is how much geometry i need to get these stripes right then 
in edit mode, I may not have shared this feature before, but if you go to edit mode and you press one, you go to vertex select mode, obviously. And we can now set our, sorry, press F3 and search for, um, what is it called? Um, checker deselect, checker deselect, right? And if you use that, you'll see that each odd vertex is going to get deselected, right? So that means that we now have every other vertex selected, which means we can now just press S and scale them down a little bit, right? Just displace this a little bit inwards, for example, or outwards, it doesn't really matter. And well, this is a very easy method of just creating patterns like this in edit modes, right? So there's like the same feature you can modify. So if I check or deselect once again, you have a few options there at the bottom left. I got my mouse thingy covered there, but you can choose the amount that's going to be deselected. So you can even select uh, like one and then three deselected, one selected, stuff like that. You can offset it the way you look, um, you like the most. Stuff like that. So checker deselect is something I use a lot for sure. So keep that in mind for anything you can. All right. So for the high poly, we will just extrude this up, right? In the Z direction, lock that. And there we go. And you'll just scale this down just like that. Beautiful, right? There's a little bit of an, uh, what is it called? Like a loft going on, right? It's going from big to smaller, a little bit smaller there at the top. And well, to get those little columns in here, right, because they are made out of separate parts, of course, what we could do is just add a few edge loops, control R, scroll up like five times. There we go. Now keep those selected, but press two to go to edge select. And actually we may have to deselect some, right? So just press double click on the edge loops that we want to split. And this one included holding shift, double click or alt left click. Um, that should work for some people as well. So if double click doesn't work, try alt left click. And then we can press F3 and that's gonna make a search for a function. And we're gonna just search for edge split, right? And we're gonna split the me mesh by edges. Actually, let me see, split, uh, where is it? Split, phase by edges. I think that was the same thing that just was listed, but we can select that. And now we have separate parts of our geometry. Right, so select everything and then set your transform pivot point to individual origins and just scale it down just a little bit, for example. Right, so now we have a little bit of a loop there in between. Okay, now obviously we're not going to continue with this one because I just told you guys, hey, welcome Liquid. I just told you guys that we're going to focus a little bit more on low poly. Right, so if I select all of this, and look at the bottom right, we can see how many vertices and edges and faces we have. All right, so for example, we have 420 verts. That is a nice coincidence. Uh, but we can also make this low poly. Very, very easily, right? So, to do this, to get the same shape, and I'm going to go to rendered field real quick, because that's the only way we're really going to see the nice shadows of those displacements right there, right? And we can actually do that without needing the geometry, right? And some of you may already know how, but I'm just going to explain it once again, right? Set my device to GPU. And now to create a low poly of this, I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh Circle. But instead of 42, I'm going to set it to 8 now. And I'm going to move this to the right, GY. I'm going to go to Edit Mode, press A, press E, and Z. And just make it about the same distance and just scale this down a little bit as well. All right, so we got pretty much the same length now, but we have a lot less geometry. So how do we get the same shadows? How do we get the same feel of the displacement? And how do we do it without needing more geometry, right? Because we will be using the pillar all over the place in our Greek city. So we want to keep everything. We're going to scatter around as low poly as possible. Right, so first of all, I'm going to shade this smooth to get rid of these vertical lines there. Right mouse, shade smooth. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is press Ctrl A to apply, and I'm going to apply, apply all transforms pretty much. Okay, just to get rid of all the deformations we would have otherwise. And I'm going to press Tab, double click this bottom area, Shift S, cursor to select it, go out of edit mode, right mouse, set origin to 3D cursor. Right, reason why is because if we want to append this later to our, um, either this is going to be like in the asset library, the Big Blender Pro Suite or you want to append it to your other projects, 
that it's going to be easier if the origin point is set at the bottom because that is going to be placed on the floor. All right, so that's pretty much how you're going to go about that. All right, so how do we get these displacements? Well, we're not going to do it in geometry, so we're going to do it in the shader editor. So drag your window to the left there. Let's set this to the shader editor and let's hit new for a new material. There we go. All right, so how do we start this? Well, you can see that these are all pretty much lines, right? We got vertical lines and we got horizontal lines, small lines, right? So how do we get the same look we have there? So let's start off by adding a wave texture. Shift A, search wave texture, all right? And if I control shift click on that, you'll be able to see how it looks, right? So we pretty much have vertical stripes already. It's looking a little bit odd, but we're going to fix that, okay? So first things first, if you want a texture that is proper for your model, I told you last time you could use the cube projection in the UV editor, right? Because our wave texture is going to depend on our UV maps, right? So if I select this and press Ctrl T, it is actually going to add our mapping nodes and it's going to set our texture coordinates. And we want this to be set on the UVs. Okay, now it's going to turn black right away because we don't have a UV map. Okay, so let's set this to the UV editor first. And let's press tab, press A, and let's just press U, Q projection. Okay, so now we can see that we get these vertical lines, but our UVs are just two squares, <laughs> right? And that's not really what we're looking for right now. And so what we're going to do is just manually unwrap this a little bit, okay? And this is the easiest shape to unwrap, apart from like, like a cube or a plane. A plane is obviously the easiest. But a cylinder is very easy because it is basically just a plane, right? A, imagine a piece of paper that you roll up into a cylinder, right? You pretty much have one seam, and that is where you're going to connect it pretty much, right? If you wrap it around each other, if you roll up that paper and you put like a little... Uh, what is it called? A little, uh, like the sticky, sticky tape, tape <laughs> on the edge, then that is going to be your seam, pretty much. Right, so we're going to select one edge, right mouse, mark seam, press A, U, O, A, U, and unwrap. Right, so now it knows that this edge here is a seam, and that it has to open it up at that point. Right, so we pretty much get a little plane already but now we have a little bit of a deformation going on and you can see that well in the uvs it's only a little bit but in your texture it is going to actually mean that our lines our vertical lines are going to be positioned a little bit weird all right because they're not going straight with the edges with the geometry and that is because our object is unwrapped a little bit with a curve right so how do we fix that well it is incredibly easy all right, and it is something that you just have to know, All right? If you want to straighten this up, you need at least one straight square, right? One face. And that's just going to... Right, so now we have one square that is completely nice and squared, right? The corners are 90 degrees. Press A, so our nice and straight one is still the one selected. And now we can press right mouse and follow active quads. And you can see it's going to stretch it out according to the one that we just made nice. Right, so that's going to follow the quad that we selected, which means the lines are all going to be into the same direction. And it's a very easy way to straighten up any kind of UV unwrap you pretty much need to straighten out. So you will use it a lot for cylinders, but also for other shapes. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now our lines follow the geometry nicely, and you can already see we get the same pretty much displacement lines as black and white values. Right, so let's go back to our object shader. 
And let's see how we can actually use this, right? I'm gonna connect my principal BSDF up in a second, but first we're gonna get this wave texture to the right sizes, pretty much. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, well, just try to follow the same amount of the left model. And that is something we do by just playing around with the scale of the wave texture. All right, you can see if you scale this up, the waves are pretty much going to be closing in on each other, right? Those vertical lines are going to get closer and closer and closer. So I think I'm going to set it at something like that. That's looking fine. And well, I don't think it matters a lot, but I'm just going to set all the detail and the scale and the roughness to zero because, well, we don't need that right now. Okay, we just want nice and straight lines. All right, so to get the displacement, we're going to control shift click on the principal BSDF to get our shader back and connect the wave texture up to the normal map, press shift A and search for a bump. There we go. Drag that in and connect the wave texture from the normal to the height. All right, so this is going to define pretty much the height of the normal map now. And that's going to be controlled by our black and white values of the texture. Okay, so now we can just set the strength to be a little bit lower, for example, to just get a little bit of a smoother result there, okay? Right, so if I now just move this point light a bit to the right, for example, there we go, we can get pretty much the same look if we tweak those values a little bit, right? Let me actually just get an environment HDRI in here because a point light is not the way to go. Right, so let's select color. You all know how to add an HDRI. Environment, open. I got a lot of them downloaded. HDR, and you know where to download this. It's polyhaven.com. I usually use Whipple Creek Gazebo. It is one that has like a nice all around lighting and it also has a nice amount of reflection, right? It's basically a little forest area. Um, but we've got some sun shining through the trees and we've got some nice shadows. So I usually like this one a lot. All right, so let's delete this point light. And now we can actually compare the shadows of these, right? So I can make it a little bit stronger, for example. And you can see that they already match pretty much one on one, right? Now, how do we get the vertical lines? Now, right here, I over exaggerated a little bit, right? I made the gap a little bit bigger so we can actually spot it. But in here, we can just do the same thing with another displacement map, right? So all that this is, is basically, let me scroll in here, is basically another displacement that is going to be in the vertical direction. All right, so let's make a very simple version of that by just duplicating that wave texture. There we go. Let's control shift click on that. So we see the direction that it's heading in and let's connect the same mapping vector to the wave texture. And now we're just going to swap the X direction, right? Up to, let's see, what, what one do we need? I'm always a little bit lost there. It depends on the rotations and stuff of your model. Um, I applied that just now, so it should be... Yeah, this, this is the actual, <laughs> that logical direction that you should have checked. Right, so now we have vertical lines. It is obviously not in the right quantity. So we can just, once again, just scale this up until we have the right amount of lines, all right? Something like that. So you can now see that the black values are pretty much in line with the lines on the left, for example. I'm using that as my reference now. And now we need to pretty much close these black lines down a little bit, right? We want them to be a bit tighter so we only get that little edge there right so how do we do that well quite easy we just have to add a color ramp shift a search color ramp swipe that in between and control shift click on that one um, and make sure that it's on the color so if you control shift click multiple times you will see it's switching from the outputs so make sure it's set on color and now we can just drag the whites closer to the blacks All right there we go it is now quite tight now, at some point, you won't be able to get this even thinner, right? No matter if I set this position all the way to 0 0.0001, it's going to stay the same value, right? And if that happens and you want it to be even thinner, all you have to do is add another color ramp. Shift A, color ramp. There we go. And now we can swipe this bar to the left and you'll see it gets thinner and thinner, right? So that's how you control the thickness of that line, pretty much. All right, so let me tweak the value so that the black line at the top is just out of the view, right? And I'm going to do that with the scale. Scale this down just a little bit. There we go. So now we have four, <laughs> four of these black lines, right? And that's just going to be 
another one of our bump values, right? So how do we mix these two up? I usually just press shift A, search for a math node and set that to add, right? That's gonna keep our initial values and add any color that we add to it, right? So I'm gonna swipe this into that add value and I'm gonna press control shift, click on that and you'll already see how that is going to look a little bit, right? So let's just press control shift, click on the principal BSDF and you can already see the combination of the two, all right? Now, you may wonder, how do you control the strength of each individual ones, right? That's where it gets a little bit, um, well, manual pretty much, because your bump node only allows you to control the overall bump value, right? And that's going to control both of these inputs, right? So if I set this to zero, both of them are gone. Set this to one, they're both very strong, right? Let's say I want these vertical lines to be less strong. How do we fix that? Well, all we need is to add, for example, a color ramp there, right? Add a color ramp, very easy. And all that the texture is, is black and white values, right? So if you want the bump node to be less strong for only that input, we can simply make the black value a little bit less black, right? Make it a little bit more white. So if we set this black to be gray and just control shift, click on the principal BSDF, you'll see that the texture gets a little bit less strong. And if I set this all the way to white, here we go, it's going to completely disappear, right? So that is how you can control the individual values of these textures, okay? So remember that because that's a very useful thing. All right, how do we add some color now, right? We got the displacement, we got the bumps. I wanna add a little bit of those stone brick textures, right? I want to add some cracks perhaps. So let me show you a quick way to do that as well, right? So the easiest way to add cracks or whatever it is that is nature related, right? Or what that is like realistic, has to be realistic. It's best to just get it from real life textures, right? From grunge maps, for example, or scratch maps or a combination of both or make your own pictures, right? If you see a wall somewhere and you you think like, oh damn, those are some nice textures, right? Nice, nice cracks and stuff. Just make a picture and you can use your own inputs as well, right? So what I'm going to do is just add a texture that I already downloaded. So I'm going to select my principal BSDF, hit Control T to add a new texture image. I'm going to open this up. You probably won't be able to see this. And then I'm going to select a grunge map, right? And it's going to be a texture that I downloaded from the Pixabay. Pixabay has a lot of royalty-free images that are just up for grabs. You can just download those and most of them won't even need an attribution, right? You won't have to attribute anyone, the creator whatsoever, so you can use it for free. Make sure that you check the licensing so you don't use any textures for commercial work, for example, and then get bitten in the ass later, okay? So we got this texture. It already looks quite nice actually on the pillar. Right, and right now it is just a color texture. I'm actually going to use this as a color texture just because I like the way this looks. But I'm also going to connect it once again to the bum values, right? I want these cracks to be a little bit more inward, right? To have some depth at least. So I'm gonna do that by connecting this once again with a math node to my bump value, right? So let's swipe, swipe all of this to the right. Shift A, search for another math node. Here we go, set it to add, and just swipe the color into the second value there. Right, so you can already see we got some bump values going on. Now, if you zoom in all the way, this is going to be a little bit um, low res, and that depends on the texture. If you have a 4K, 8K texture, it's going to look much better, of course. Um, I just got this one, it's, I think, like 1500 by 1500. So if you zoom in all the way, it's going to look a little bit, little bit low res, of course. So make sure that you know that the quality of your bump map depends on the texture of as well, okay? So if you think you don't want this weird quality stuff, you don't need those little dots there, you just want the cracks, you can press Shift A and search for a color ramp, right? Color ramp is our best friend in, <laughs> in the shader tab, pretty much, and also in the geometry node tab. Um, so swipe that in between, Ctrl Shift, click that, and let's just play with the sliders until we only have pretty much the cracks left, right? So I'm gonna swipe the blacks a little bit more to the right, and the Y's a little more to the left until we pretty much get those cracks and maybe some some other small cracks and indents, but not like all of these little chaotic parts, okay? And we can always tweak that, of course. 
Right, so if I now go back to my principal BSDF, you can see we get a smoother surface, but we get more of the bump value at all of these cracks, right? So let's find one of a nice spot there, for example. Contrastive click that. We get some actual bump value there. And well, you can see that it changes depending on how far we tweak these values, for example, right? All the way to the left. It's going to be the strongest for the indents, and then we can control how much of those little dots we want visible, for example. Right, so uh, that is just something you can play around with. Um, a texture usually works very well into both the color and the bump as well, right? Especially things like this, where color can pretty much match the indents as well, right? The indents usually have a little bit of an ambient occlusion, which means that if those indents, right, those cracks happen to be black, right, if I control shift click it, it means that we pretty much already get some ambient occlusion, right? Ambient occlusion is something you'll use a lot as well, because it basically tells you what parts of a mesh are close together, right? For example, in those cracks, or if you have a wall that is um, standing on the floor, then you have ambient occlusion right there at the corner where the wall meets the floor, for example, right? Where two parts meet, you will have ambient occlusion most of the time, right? And that is very useful if you have what black and white textures, for example, or dark and light textures, because that can already give you a nice indication of where the ambient occlusion will be, right? So adding this in your color tab, either directly or as like a math node or multiply node, already can give you a nice look of those cracks as well. Right, so if you want this wall to actually become a little bit of a different color there, a little bit more brownish, we can just add Shift A, add a mix color there, add that in, and we don't want this to be a mix. I think we're just gonna set this to color. Let's see. Um, and we're gonna set this to well, a little bit orange, I guess. Let's see why. What's going on here? Uh, one sec. I did a weird thing here. Ah, I'm looking at the wrong model. Excuse me. Right. <laughs> Mixed color <laughs> happens when we have two identical models. And then we can just set this to color. And then just set the color to be more of an orangey color, for example. And now we can even swipe this all the way to the right. You'll see it gets full, pretty much orange, but it still keeps the cracks, right? The black values, it still keeps it, right? So that is very nice. So we can now fully control the color that we like, right? So that depends on what you're looking for. I'm gonna try to mesh this a little bit. So I'm gonna do that by eye real quick, or something like this. It also depends on the lighting, of course. Um, and then I want some kind of a noise texture to control the color as well. If I zoom in here, right? It is all about looking at the details. We have some dark spots. We have some light spots. We even have some leaks here, I guess, from like the water and stuff. Leaks here as well. Right, so that means that we need to do some color customization. And we have, even have some dark and light spots on those pillars in the vertical direction. Right, so we have a lot we can actually see right there from the image that can be used to add detail to our object. Right, so first things first, I want to add a little bit of noise here. So what I'm going to do is press Shift A and look for a noise texture. Right, that's the easiest way to get noise. And I'm going to Control Shift click that just to see what it looks like. I'm going to scale this up just like that. Or maybe a little bit less actually. And I'm going to press Shift A once again. Add a color ramp. Beautiful. And I'm gonna tweak those values so they are gonna be a little bit closer. Now, it can happen that your object is a little bit stretched still. If your noise texture looks stretched, what I'm usually just gonna do is add a mapping node, Shift A, mapping, and just connect that into your vector. And now we can, for example, um, and we may just have to connect the UVs as well. Give me a sec. There we go. Now the UVs and the mapping will determine the noise texture vector as well, which is going to match your UVs, right? Which basically means that it's going to be matching the rest of your model like this, right? So let's just control the scale a little bit to just get a nice feel of some noise on the texture, or sorry, on the pillar. Add some detail here, add some roughness as well while we're at it, right? Pillars are rough and damaged. Here we go. I'm even going to make this a little bit bigger, perhaps, like that. I'm going to tweak those values. I want some more black in here. 
Here we go already. Looking quite nice. And, well, the skill is, well, it depends on you pretty much. Right, so go crazy. All right, so if we want to use this to control the color to add some black spots or some dark spots, perhaps, we can press Shift A and then Shift A, mix color, swipe that in between. And I'm just going to use this color ramp as the factor that controls the mix value. Right, so if I swipe this in and we control Shift click on this math node, or sorry, on the mix color, you can see that we have some white added to this. Um, this texture. All right, so we can just turn it over to a darker color, for example, and we already get some dark and black spots here. Okay, now just control those values on how you like it. Something like that. Now, obviously, I'm not going to make this black, but just a little bit of a different color, for example, or a little bit darker, something like that. Maybe a little bit more orange, even a little bit more yellowish. There we go. Control Shift, click it. And we already have some color variation, all right? So you may have to tweak this depending on your scene setup, your lighting, stuff like that. Uh, but overall, that's a very, very quick and easy way to already get some color variation in your textures, right? So tweak those values all you need. Roughness up, detail up, always looks nice. All right, so that's a very, very, very nice start already. All right, so if I would continue this i will even add more color variation and add more bumps as well all right because if i zoom in here we get a lot of little indents and little cracks there right so i know this is going to be a, an, an attribute we have in a distance whenever we're going to make the full greek environment but right now we may as well just go crazy with the details because you may need this or any object at all to be in the foreground sometime as well so you may just have to learn how to do that as well right so we're just gonna do it all right so if we want to add a little bit more of these cracks i can just add another noise texture right noise textures are friends and i'm going to swipe that here in front of the bump node press shift a search for a math we're going to leave that at add and i'm going to add the noise texture in there as well right let's control shift click that to see how it looks I'm going to once again connect our mapping node that's connected to the UVs to the noise texture just so it is not going to be stretched out anymore. And then what we're going to do is press Shift A, another color ramp, of course. Swipe that there just so we can see it, right? This is going to be connected to the viewer tab of the surface so we can now see what it looks like. So swipe these a little bit closer. Let's increase the scale. I want these to be nice and small. Increase the roughness, increase the detail, and let's play around with it a little bit. Right, I want some large black spots, and in between a lot of white. There we go. That should already look nice. And now we can just connect the color ramp up to the add nodes, and Ctrl Shift click, the principal BSCF. Right, so now we already see a little bit more grunge there, a little bit more indents. And these actually look more high res than the texture, right? So we basically get the same results, but with a nicer texture. Beautiful. So we can combine it. We can even scale this all the way down so we get a larger cracks, right? So that's all up to you. Play around with the color ramp, right? You can see things happening as we go, right? So just play around with that and see what you like the most. All right, so now we can even use that same color ramp to control a more of the color input, right? And I know we're going crazy with this. We're adding stuff and adding stuff. But that is the real key to, well, I guess, realism a little bit, right? Because in real life, nothing is a one perfect color, especially not when it has been there since the, the, the rule of, the, of like the, the Greek people, right? It has been a long time ago which means that there has been a lot of weather conditions going over it, and there have been fights, there have been all sorts of things degrading this building, and you can really tell that from it, right? So that's why we need to just make this texture chaotic, right? A lot is happening on it. Right, so what we can do is we can control the color input with that color ramp that we just added for that noise, set that to the factor, and there we go. And we can now just tweak this color, right? I'm going to set this to color, actually. There we go. And what I'm going to do is set the white color to 
well, let's make this more of an orangey color. Um, something like that. Let's actually control shift click this to see what it looks like. Yeah, all right. So we need to actually have this color a little bit different. Right now, it's not much of a change between the black and the white, which means that we're pretty much just going to see one, one color, the orange one. So let's duplicate the color ramp. All right, and actually delete that. If you press control, what is it? Shift D, nope, control Shift D. It is going to duplicate your node while still being connected to the same input texture. That's just gonna save you a little time, right? So let's connect that one to the vector. Control Shift click on that color ramp and just tweak those values a little bit better, right? So we can actually switch between two colors. It is still going to be in the same place, right? You can see it's still going to be the same but it's going to be a little bit darker and a little bit brighter, right? So that vector is going to be controlled way better. So let's see the principal PSDF. And now we can tweak this value to where we want it, right? So we can make it a bit lighter even, right? To get more of light, some light spots in this texture, some more yellowish spots, right? So that is basically what you will keep doing until you're completely satisfied with your texture, all right? And let's see, what else can we do? It looks more greenish now. So I'm gonna crank this a little bit down. And a part why that may be is because it reflects the environment, which just happens to be green. And well, what we can do is just control the roughness as well, right? The roughness texture of our object, because right now it has one roughness of 0 0.5. And well, we want this to be controlled a little bit as well. Okay, and there's a very easy way to do this. Let's control shift click on this add node. And let's see, let's press shift A, add a color ramp there. Let's see if we can bring some of these values up. Hmm. Does not look like it that much. They're very soft, so let's press shift A, math, add a multiply perhaps, and just set that to low values. Here we go, so we already get some values back. So whenever you have a texture that is very, 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 very low contrast, we just may need to add a multiply and then just add another color ramp, right? That's just going to allow us to change the parts that are going to be like visible and the parts that are not going to be visible, right? So we already have a little bit of a nice texture going on here. Okay, so for example, we could just use this one to control the roughness. All right, so control the roughness of our principal BSDF which is going to now be blacks and whites. Now, I don't want this to be completely glossy, which means that the black color, black color means that it's going to be completely glossy, right? A roughness of zero. I'm gonna set this a little bit higher, right? Something like this, for example. And I'm gonna set the white one to be a little bit less there. Something like that. And just tweak that on how you want it to have that, okay? Now, the same goes for this, the roughness. We can keep adding textures and stuff like that. We can even add this noise texture, right? This one, which is well something that we can do very easily by just pressing Shift A, adding a math node, set to add, and just drag the color from the color ramp in there. And that has been that, right? So now we get some roughness variation. That always looks nice on your models as well, okay? So keep that in mind as well. All right, I'm actually going to set this to mix instead of color because I felt like we were too much going into the green direction. Now we have more control over the actual color. So I'm just going to set this to be a little bit darker now. All right, that looks way better. Beautiful. All right, something like that. Keep that a little bit closer. Let's see. Let me, let's not spend too much time <laughs> being picky on the color right now. But you can see how easy it is to just keep tweaking the textures, keep tweaking the colors. And then there's, there's actually one more thing that I really want to do, okay? One more thing, and then I will call this a day because we've been creating a pillar for, for more than 30 minutes now, which is a long time, but we're doing a lot of stuff as well. So if I want to add, for example, those lines, vertical lines, we can see that where they end up, right? Where the two different slabs of concrete or whatever are connected where they stand on each other you have some darker rings all right so let's add that to the texture as a final little detail as well all right so what i'm gonna do is select it and let's find a right 
space to do this in. All right, and I want to use this wave texture. Actually, is it this one? Control shift, click it. Yeah. So this is the one that controls the little edges, right? The little indents there. So I want to use the same placement to control the dark values, pretty much. All right. So what I'm going to do is just connect that one to, let's say, another color input. Right. Shift A, and I'm going to set mix color, and we can just leave this to be mix. And I want the vector to be controlled by that wave texture. So drag that in there. I'm going to Ctrl Shift click that. And now we can see that we have the inverse of what we actually want. So just swap the inputs around. And now we get those white values right from the white color mix at the placements where we want a little bit of a darker color. Right? So just set that to be darker. Let's set that to be a lot darker, something like that. And I'm actually going to set this from mix to multiply, perhaps. Gonna do the same thing for this one, maybe. Let's see. Usually, when you set this to mix, you may lose some of the um, some of the colors in between. So just play around with that as well. Let's see, mix. I think mix is fine. And we can even try some other stuff. Nah, mix is okay. Mix is okay for now. Okay, just play around with that value for yourself. All right, I'm gonna set this to be a bit darker. Even here we go. Now, Ctrl Shift, click on the principal BSDF, and let's see the results. Right, this is a little bit too dark. Let's crank that up a little bit. Something like that, for example. Right, so we already see some darker spots there at those edges. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, one final thing you could do, I know I'm going to keep doing, doing this, is we can add a little bit of a noise texture there. So this is not perfectly gradient going from light to darker values, for example. Right, so how to do that is, let's just see this input controlling the vector is the one that controls the dark and the bright values there, right? It's the one that controls the gradient. So if you press Shift A and add a math node here, and actually let me do a color ramp for this one. Color ramp, mm, no, 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 mixed color. Mixed color is what we're going with, right? Mixed color there. And what I'm going to do is press Shift A and add another noise texture. All right, we're going to make this nice and chaotic. Beautiful. Let me just paste that in front of our mix nodes so they are at least a little bit closer together. I know I should have made this way more, way more organized from the start, but here we are. I guess. Um, let's just connect this to the vector. All right, let's Ctrl Shift click that. And let's scale up this noise texture. Let's connect it up to our mapping nodes, right? Remember, if we have stretched lines, just connect it back up to your UV. There we go. And let's swipe this to the left. Shift A, color ramp, right? I want more black and white values. So I'm gonna swipe that bit closer together. All right, so you can see that these values are now just getting a little bit more randomized, right? They're not going to be as gradient as they were, we actually have some grunge going on now, which is going to mean that it's going to look a little bit more organic, I guess. Right, so Ctrl Shift click the principal BS, BSDF, and we are pretty much set and done. Right, so right like this, we can get pretty close to the actual pillar. The lighting is different, of course, the colors may be a little bit different, but we're getting close, right? We're getting really close. All right, and that is all with, let's go to tab and edit mode, select the vertices. We have 16 verts, right? 16 little points. And that is very little, right? Very little for something like this that we can just scatter around all over the place, going crazy with this. So this is something we can use very easily later to scatter around, even use this as a particle system on a ground floor, for example. And it is going to work perfectly because it's very, very low poly, okay? So the, the real lesson here is that, well, whenever you have quite basic shapes like this, just make all the details you can in texturing, okay? Just do it all in texturing. Because you're gonna add way too much geometry if you wanna just sculpt, for example, all of these little details. Or if you wanna, let's see, add all of these, these lines in the middle by hand, whatever. You are just going to add unnecessary geometry pretty much okay so just try to think about that try to keep your models as low poly as possible 
while also just maintaining the highest results. All right. So if you now at the end think that your vertical grooves are a little bit too, um, too vague, not as present anymore, we can just change that as well. Right, we can just tweak all of those color ramp, for example. I can set this to more blackish values. And this is actually the right one. Yeah. So we can change this to be more present. Let's just add a math node, you know, why not? Math should be able to just add it to multiply and crank up that value. Right, so we get darker values back. Our streaks are just getting back a bit more. Okay, so that is pretty much how you do stuff like this, right? Texturing with low polys, stuff like that. Okay, I will cut it off here because, well, I've been rambling on for a long time now. Um, but yeah, next time we can actually just make the top of this building. That's going to be very easy because I won't have to go over all of the texturing parts now again because we now know it, how it works, the basics. So we can drag that on and then we can get started on appending this to our actual scene, right? And that's going to be a lot of fun, okay? Are there any questions about this? Uh, I just... Oh, uh, wait up, my yeah, I, I just have a comment. Died in the <laughs> middle. All right. Uh, I just have a comment that uh, this is basically how, how game models get created. So the, we also have like uh, external texturing programs where we uh, make these uh, yeah, grunge maps and, and the normal maps and stuff, and then we bake them down and get added to like low poly asset like this so people can also do like uh, sculpting and then create a, basically a cage of low poly and a project on that and but yeah he basically just shows you how to make a game asset <laughs> let's <Now>. go <laughs> all right that's nice that's nice uh yeah for the game model we probably need one more step to just bake the textures i guess i can just show that next time um while we're at the um at the like the, the point of, of making game assets. And then we can also just show how to bake um, sculpting, high detail sculpting onto low poly yep. geometry. That is also a very, very good point you made. So that's for yeah, the next And, and a good one, uh, good one, but that what you did is, is like you analyze your reference, like, okay, I see lines here, what would represent these lines in my program, right? So the wave texture or whatever. So, uh, so it's good for everyone that starts modeling or creates something. Uh, just check out the model, see if you can find patterns and, and, and uh, think of how to uh, apply it within a texture or a model. Yes, sir. Thank you for that, for the addition. Uh, oh yeah, and we could even just draw textures onto the model as well and use that for, for example, the leaks and stuff. Uh, that, that goes a lot of time into actually getting all of these details, so I think we're just going to keep it like this. <laughs> I really enjoyed the 420 vertices part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. It was not even, like, like calculated. It was just like, I just was there. Okay, sure. I'm sure you stayed up for five, six hours last night trying to figure out exactly what to do to get to that number. It's okay. <laughs> We know how hard you work for us, sir. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, no, if there are no more questions, I, I think we can wrap this up. I'll save. Oh my god, I haven't even saved this blend file. I have. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it may look a little bit chaotic, but it's really, really easy to set up if you just start from like. The, the first the first part is getting those those lines and then adding the grunge textures adding the bump maps and stuff it, it's really easy the basics are just color ramping noise textures math nodes and mixing the colors pretty much and then uh, just use <laughs> I, I have a small question because your lines are like straight your spaghetti lines basically yeah uh, default is i think uh, curved Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, I have not really, I have not looked at it in a long time. There is, uh, well, let me check, maybe in the preferences. Um, you can swap it really easy with one setting, but I forgot where it is. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, because I like to use pre uh, reroute nodes to uh, basically make it uh, cleaner. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. 
So do you use? Can you use um, reroute route nodes with this? Or yeah, 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 you can just thread oh, nice. them to. Uh, that's what you mean, right? Oh, that yeah, yeah, that makes it way clear. Yeah, so so <laughs> uh, our the default lines are like curved lines, with, like a base here curve. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. Um... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think you even can can make it like uh, that. You only see the connection that you select. So, uh, for example, now now everything looks active, right? But uh, you have like a setting you can uh, turn on, and then everything is kind of grayed out. And when you select something, it becomes active, so you can see the connection that goes. Yes, sir. <laughs> No, there is a, a a setting in the preferences for it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I found it. I found it. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, yeah, I need to switch the the window to my desktop. I think you won't be able to see my. Um, damn it! How do I do this? Ah, screens. There we go. All right. Can you now see my screen? All right, so edit. Thank you, thank cool you. Cool background, yeah. <laughs> edit preferences, and then we go to themes, and then we can go to the note editor, and I'll scroll down, and you have a noodle curving option. So uh, by default, this is on like five. You get all these curves. Um, but if you set this to zero, it will just be a straight line pretty much, right? So that is how you, you, you switch that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This. this you know. Is... You know. We have to. Uh, you know. We have to create like a base universe theme now, right? Oh yeah. Let's do it. Like with green and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Um. Yeah. If that was it, then. Uh... I'll thank you all for attending, and thank you, Bull, for the for the input as well. It's always helpful. And thank you for the explanation, man. It's a really helpful uh, tutorial, I think, for most people. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all, guys. Uh, are you popping over to the coffee shop or not? Yep, 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 yep. Was a good class. All right, see you later, guys.